Hey guys, JV here, joined by Biofan, and we're going to talk about 10 things we want to see from BioWare's upcoming game, Anthem. Thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey everyone, Biofan here. Um, I cover Bioware games, so feel free to check out my channel after watching this over on JV's channel. So the first thing that I want to see from Anthem is the solo player experience they've been telling us exists on Twitter that we've not really seen or heard anything about, but we know it exists. I feel like kind of what they showed at E3 was very tailored to try and gain the interest of a new audience. So they were trying to show things that aren't typically associated with Bioware games to try and get in new players. Because, you know, larger player base means more money. So I think that they were trying to focus kind of on that. So I think maybe in the future they will show the solo player experience, but I just hope that it's kind of equal to that co-op element. And the devs have said that they put in a lot of effort to have it to where the solo player experience still is equal to that. But I'm hoping that the words are equal to what we'll see, if that makes sense. Sure. And, you know, solo player is what Bioware is known for. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're able to carve that out when they really are, I feel like, going for that, hey, you can play with friends, this is a co-op, multiplayer, live service experience, and that sort of thing. But what if you don't have friends? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 really, it's, it's an issue, right? If you don't. So hopefully they have a replacement for that. What I'd like to see from Anthem is a rewarding experience with your friends, which it sounds like I'm going in the op opposite direction that you did, but I think it's possible that we can get both here, you know what I mean? And so Bioware isn't really known for this type of game. Like you said, they came out immediately to try to gain the interest of a new audience. Uh, you know, maybe an audience that plays Destiny or another game like that, one of those live service MMO, not MMO kind of games. So they've already put a lot of emphasis on that cooperative experience. I want to see how they distinguish it from something like Destiny and maybe even make it better because I know there's a lot of people on the bandwagon who don't really like Destiny, want it to be better. They had different expectations. And so I think this is an opportunity for them to flesh out some really cool cooperative features like maybe guilds and clans that you can experience this game with your other Bioware fans. And so if they have incentives to play with others and make this a really fun cooperative experience, then I think they're moving in the right direction. I mean, for me, I kind of play video games by myself because it's kind of like an escape experience from my like day to day. But if it's there, the co-op mode, then I'm going to, you know, mess around with it a little bit. So I do hope that it is something that is enjoyable even if it's not something that I'll play all the time, um, I hope that it's something that is still pretty cool. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to try and appease both, you know, both sides because we know, like you said, the solo player experience is something they're known for. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I want to see is a character creator that's kind of on Inquisition's level. Andromeda wasn't quite there yet to Inquisition, so I'm hoping at least Inquisition quality character creator or better. I mean, this time they're not held back by like the last gen of 360 and PS3. It's all next gen. So I'm hoping that if they use the development time wisely, that we'll have a really, really good character creator and hopefully really good hair, because that's something we've been asking for <laughs> for a very long time is good hair. Um, the reason mostly not just to have like a cool looking character, but I feel that when I do customize a character, that I feel much more connected to that story and to the game itself. Even if I'm not doing like my first run through with like the self insert, even if I just do like a character that I make look cool, I feel more connected to the game if I feel like I've made that character, if that makes sense, you know? It does, absolutely. And so for me, I usually don't mess around with the character creator because I suck at it. <laughs> and that's just me. Like I'll, I'll make this monster looking horrific Frankenstein character. And so I always revert back to <laughs> default Shepard. Shepard's a good looking dude. So I like to play with Shepard and uh, 
and I play with default Scott as well. And so I totally get what you mean about a solid character creator. They really do need that. Even if, you know, someone like me isn't going to necessarily use it, I see the value there for a lot of people that really want to connect with their character. And then the next thing I want to see is depth in character classes in combat. And uh, I'm someone who grew up playing some MMOs, and so I always thought um, that a deep progression with those character classes and having a variety in ways you approach different situations is super important. And that's also something that all Bioware games have had in the past. There's a satisfying progression there, talking about Mass Effect and Dragon Age. And so I understand if Anthem is centered around gunplay primarily, but I really want to see a variety of abilities and different ways to approach combat in this game. I just hope it's not a dumbed down shooter with sacrifices being made for more casual players. And I think you can kind of look at Destiny if you're going to talk about another game that sort of does that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think we've seen kind of like at least four kind of different combat styles, if that makes sense with the four different javelins we were shown. Right. Like there's one that's kind of, I'm going to just say it's like a mage kind of that looks a little bit different. And then there's like the Colossus that's this big, like explodey, fiery tank. So I think that there's like a good mix in there, probably, I would say. Like the past several Bioware games have had where you have like a class system or different kind of specializations, if that makes sense. So I'd like to see something like that where you can kind of, aside from what javelin you're using, have like kind of abilities that you specialize in that can be used on any javelin, if that makes sense. Sure, like an overall class. Yeah, and then kind of going back to the making a super awesome character thing, the javelin helmets look really cool, but I want to see like a toggle option where I can turn it on and off, preferably off, because I've spent hours creating this beautiful not human human, <laughs> and I want to see that beautiful not human human talking to people in the world, you know, not like covered up in a helmet. We saw like where like the face part kind of lifted it's not enough for me. I want to see like the full like neck up area or at least like chin up. I, I can live with chin up, but um, I want to see a toggle on and off. We've had that in like every Bioware game that's had helmets. So I feel like it's pretty likely, but I still just want to stress the fact that I want it. Um, I think in the trailer, probably why they kept all the helmets on was either for like the game's aesthetic, kind of what they were going for with the javelins. Or maybe the hair wasn't totally ready for most characters. Like, if you look back at Fort Tarsus, like, everyone's kind of got a headgear thing kind of going on, like, covering up all the hair. Right. There's a few people with hair, like Praxley and then that lady with the goggles. But most everyone has their hair covered, so I'm wondering, maybe that's why they didn't show it off yet. Or maybe they're still working on the facial animations. I mean, what we did see of them looked amazing, so I'm not worried about them. But maybe they're just still working on them. So maybe that's why they kept the javelin helmet on. Yeah, sure. The the mocap looked really good on that one guy. And I thought that was kind of not extremely unique because there's definitely some mocap going on in Andromeda, unless I'm mistaken. But yeah, I think this is an important thing too, especially for a Bioware game. So next thing I'd like to see is a massive world with meaningful exploration. And we caught a glimpse at that, at the massive world part of it. I mean, talk about technically impressive. Even if you don't like the way Anthem looks, you have to admit that it's impressive just looking at the level of depth in the world. You just don't see that, especially at, you know, how beautiful it was. So that whole moment of jumping off of Fort Tarsus was absolutely insane for me. Um, and I felt like it could have just been a pretty backdrop, which is something you see in Destiny, right? There's areas <laughs> where you're like, wow, that looks amazing. Can I go there? No. But no, you can go into the backdrop. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can go into the background. So I hope they're able to maintain the size and scope of kind of what they promised with what they showed there. Um, in the explorable space and then somehow pack it with meaningful activities. This sounds like a high expectation thing here, but I hope they're able to pull it off and I hope it's good. Yeah, this is their third open world game and their first two open world attempts were not too positively received. Yeah. Like they did some cool stuff, but then it was kind of this large area that sure, it's pretty, but there's a lot of Empty stuff space. that's just pretty yeah. nothing above that like there's things but not enough things are not the quite the like 
level of depth you want in those things. Like they're small, insignificant things like side quests, like go get that ring, um, things like that. So I can definitely, while I do enjoy open world, it's not like my favorite thing in the games. Like if there wasn't open world, I'd be just as happy if there was, if that makes sense. Sure. So I think that so long as they make it to where it is open, but it's not too open, or at least it's got like depth to the open, but it kind of looks like there is right. from what they showed us. Like you can dive into the water. We pass this ruin. Like there's things around. Right. This is what it looks like. Catch yeah. Your, you know, attention. <laughs> and they've had two previous open world game feedback. So they've got feedback from Inquisition and feedback from Andromeda. So I'm hoping that those two previous open world games lead to a much better open world anthem, you know? Right, yeah. And then another thing I want to see, and it feels kind of weird putting it on this list because it's been in literally every Bioware game ever, <laughs> but it's strange in that we haven't even seen the hint of it for as much as we've seen of Anthem, and that is companions or squad mates or followers or whatever. Um, I'm not sure how the co-op element affects this, if it, like, if you have companions, but then the minute someone enters the co-op mode and someone joins you if those go away or like if the co-op can like the co-op people come along with you or if like the co-op people are the only people that can come along with you and there aren't companions which to me would feel really sad because one of my favorite things in bioware games is the party banter so much fun yeah, so much fun i love it in every single game like even andromeda with all of its faults had really great party banter no inside that nomad <laughs> yeah. Bring on... PB anywhere. Yes. It's a party. PB and Jaw was a great combo for me. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, one thing to also take note of is that the writing team is composed of some of the best character writers in Bioware's history. Like, you've got people that gave you Morgan. You've got people that gave you Varric Tethris. People that gave you Liara in Mass Effect 3. Like, you've got great character writers. So I feel that if they're not making companions or squad mates then there's at least like very significant characters that maybe they don't come along with you, but they're very significant and you can go talk with them, like maybe have like lots of visitation scenes. Like, you know, when you go like in Skyhold in Inquisition and you go talk to people or like on the Tempest and Andromeda, like those, they may not come along with you, but you still have those visitation scenes, you know, like uh, Kelly Chambers, like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but may but a lot more important. <laughs> yeah, more important than yeah, just telling probably. you you have emails. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, kind of like conversations and hubs and things like that. Maybe if they can't come along with you, they could make up for it in having like a lot of personal quests, or I think they're calling them objectives in Anthem, like a lot of like personal mission objective things instead of just like the one or two, since they're not coming along with you. Something to kind of you know make up for that at least, you know. Sure, and that kind of this kind of leads into my own um, point as well. My next one, which is Bioware's quality characters, kind of piggybacking off of what you said, uh, we expect fantastic characters from Bioware games because we've had so many throughout Mass Effect and throughout Dragon Age, and so it's just a hallmark of Bioware as a studio. No matter which specific studio it's developed at, we're going to get some great characters. And so games in the past revolve around adventuring with your teammates, whether you're in Dragon Age or Mass Effect, growing bonds with them and seeing a progression of a relationship. And so I do want to see that in Anthem in some form or fashion, regardless of if they're going in this new kind of open world live service direction. And so, like you said, I think it's going to be interesting to see how uh, you know, co-op players will replace companions if that's something that's going to happen. I think there should be AI companions for solo players. Again, I just think it's a hallmark of the studio. And I have a feeling that they might want us to replace those experiences with other players. That would be really sad if the expectation was to go in by yourself and you're only going to experience it by yourself unless you have other people to play with. I sincerely hope they don't do that. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I'd say that's kind of one thing I'm concerned about, but it's something that while I'm concerned, it could be alleviated if they do it right. I, it might be okay, but... It's something that I'm kind of like, um, that's why I play these games. Right. But um, the next thing that I want to stress is that because it is live service and they've kind of talked about it being like a 10-year journey, 
I'm hoping that it doesn't kind of do what some other live service games have done, where, like, for example, Destiny at launch had a very minimal story level. Like, you couldn't do too much. It was mostly kind of co-op stuff, and the story was pretty small. But then they released several pieces of content and billed you for those content in addition to, like, the $60 game you bought. So I'm hoping that at launch, the story is complete, the game feels complete. If there was nothing else, it would feel complete. And then those, like, additional add-on pieces just add to the experience. They don't make it complete. They just add on to it further. Like, DLC, kind of, with a lot of previous games, maybe not so much Trespasser, but, like, other DLCs that aren't, like, inclusion DLCs. Those were really good in how it just added to the experience. It wasn't necessarily fixing the fact that there wasn't enough story before. It was just kind of adding more, if that makes sense. And for me, like another component to being like complete is that there's enough story within that huge open world versus Dragon Age Inquisition and Andromeda didn't have enough story within the big open world they did. So I'm hoping that it's complete and that that live service just adds further to what's already there. Yeah, I think that Destiny is the prime example when you're going to talk about how you might be worried in which direction they're headed. Um, With Anthem, I absolutely agree 100%. The it needs to be complete without DLC. It needs to be 100%. And then you're adding on another 10%. So it's a 110% experience, right? So I hope they do that. And I hope they do it right. So my final point, uh, the final point for this video actually, is that they do science fantasy correctly. And this was a little tweet. Do you remember who tweeted this out at Bioware? I think it was Aaron Flynn. Was it about the lore? It was about how they're going to do... Actually, I think it was an interview they were talking about. Yeah, it was an interview with like CBC Radio with Aaron Flynn. That's exactly what it was. Yes, they said... I'm so hardcore. (laughs) Yes, you know, you're on top of it. I know his stuff. I have the receipts. All of the receipts. (laughs) (laughs) Call them up whenever you need them. Um, So Bioware have said that the game will be science fantasy like Star Wars, similar to Destiny in its own way. So... Some elements of the world and storytelling won't be based in reality necessarily. Kind of like you have the Force in Star Wars and Light versus Dark in Destiny. These are kind of um, weird entities that, you know, can't be explained with reality. And so science fantasy, however, doesn't necessarily mean you don't have to explain what's going on. That's what we got from Destiny. And so I feel like we've been bagging on Destiny for a lot of the video. It's because we want this game to be a better version Um, Not a better version of it, you know, a Bioware version of that kind of game. Just a really good game. And so I hope that they show a willingness to explain the lore and backstories and let players fall in love with this new IP like they have with every other Bioware IP. I mean, we're such big fans, right? I mean, you run a channel surrounding Bioware. Exactly. My name is literally BioFan (laughs) on my channel. (laughs) Right, exactly. And so I hope they get this right. And they've said, like the lore won't be quite as like scientifically explained like with mass effect, which I think is okay. So long as there is like enough of it to where you can understand everything, but you don't necessarily need it to understand everything. Like there's enough presented in the game. Um, They're kind of more focused on like what you're doing and what's happening there, which I'm okay with. So long as like, there's still some kind of, mystery that there's lore behind so that the fans can kind of go in and be like this is what i think will happen because this lore entry said this and then (laughs) so i think that i mean given that david gator was the first lead writer on it and he did the lore for all of dragon age i think it's safe it may be a different style of lore but i think it's safe like i'm not too concerned i'm curious but i'm not concerned you know but overall i like while I'm like kind of intrigued, a little bit cautious, I want this game to be good. Like I want my socks to just be like knocked off, <laughs> right. fly across the room. Like no more socks. I will never <laughs> find my socks again because this game was so good. That's what I want. <laughs> of course. I think that's what we all want. Thanks so much for joining us on this video. Thanks for joining me, BioFan. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. And remember to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you aren't here already and go over to BioFan's channel. He covers a lot of Bioware, everything Bioware. And so if you're interested in that, be sure to head over there. Link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.